Hi, welcome to Flow State of Mind video blog. I'm Summer Huntington and I'm here with Rodrigo from Costa Rica. Hi. He is the Latin American director for Armax International. He's a two-time World Cup in Karate. Um, he also owns a fitness center in San Jose in Costa Rica and I'm really excited to have him here. Thanks. Getting interviewed. We just finished up, or they actually just finished up, two days of club ball training. Previous to that, there was two days of flow fit training, so we're here yep. at the end of the seminar. You can see there's <laughs> lots of chalk yeah. in our club balls here. Um, so I'll just start with our first question. Excellent. Happy uh, to be here. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks so for the invitation. Yeah, of course. Um, so my first question is, how did you get into this work on um, CST, TACFIT, FlowFit? What was your entry point? Okay. So my entry point was several years ago. I started back in 2011 when I met Scott over web. So I, my background is, I, my major is systems engineer. So I got an office work. I used to work for a corporation. And at my day-to-day -day office, I used to travel some and some time and then be at work sometimes. So at some point, I was still competing in my karate world and doing a lot of uh, martial arts. So I needed to do something more efficient for my physical conditioning training for my specific sport. Mm -hmm. And I started looking for some alternative and something new out on the market. I started reaching out in Costa Rica to local gyms, fitness facilities, but if they were very conventional, very not very appealing for me on my on my background in martial arts. So I saw Scott, but I went to Scott not on the fitness world, but more on the martial arts world. I saw him uh, competing, and that time he was just recently finishing the the world uh, games, and and he was still active. And I said, well, this guy at this age doing this competition, he must be doing something very very good with his fitness and his mobility and his. Are you saying that's old? No, 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 no. Back no. then, no. <laughs> no. 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 So yeah, so I was very. That was my hook, and then I I start to go a little bit more and I start to look into his programs. Then I look look into tap fit CST and all the the Armax programs, and I contact the guys. I was the first one in Costa Rica to reach out, and long story short, I. That was like my aha moment. It was like an epiphany for me. The first certification, it was one week of CST and TACFIT, very intense. And then I keep going and, and pursuing the system and Scott, the founder, and, and some of the other top coaches from our community. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that got my attention. And, and long story short, I quit my job three years ago and full time dedicated to my passion. Yeah. And I've seen yeah, you yeah. in the States several times. Uh, do you come out here once a year, twice a yeah, year? Yeah, I try to do it at least once a year. We, as it, it has been sometimes since I'm running Latin America direction, so I try to, to come at least to the States once a year. We have had the opportunity to expand in several countries in Latin America, so I got the chance also to travel with Scott and expand some of our Latin region. Yes. So we're still working in progress, but yeah, I, at least I try to, to come to the states that it's like the mech of tactic at least once a year. Yeah. Awesome. Very nice. My next question, how do you define flow state or flow state of mind? What does that mean to you? Okay, so for me, flow state of mind, it's when you are completely in a conscious state and aware that, that you want to see with acceptance all the challenges that you have, but try to roll with the punches and try to deal with the things. I mean, each of us have different problems, different situations, but you have two options. Either you are a little bit more resilient and you adapt to the situations that you are facing and try to flow with them, or you have a bad attitude. So for me, that's flow state of mind. When you either you have a hard situation or a hard problem to deal with, that you can see the opportunities, see this as an opportunity or as a problem. So for me, when you are in your flow state of mind, even though you have these challenges on your day-to-day -day basis, it could be something really hard, big, or something small or day-to-day -day with your family, friends, work, that you are able to flow with this and, and try to do your best as, uh, on all these situations. 
Well, I'd love to hear more about your martial arts experience. Would you mind just going into no. a little detail about, I mean, I know you've been studying for a really long time since you're a wee one, but no, no, yeah, no, what's no, your no. story with that? Well, basically, when, when I started back martial arts, I was four years old. It was like my daycare with my mom and my brother. Uh, we were in a school, but my mom and dad, both of them, were working in order to to sustain our uh, our family. So my, after we finished school, there was one teacher that pretty much crossed the street with us and leave us in the karate academy. And I, it was not like a, a, a hand-picked selection. It was because it was available for my mom, and it was an after-school activity that we can just be there for some time until she finished her work and come and pick us up. So, I mean, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, no option for us to decide if we wanna go or not to karate. So, actually my brother started with me, but he quit as soon as we were out of school. So, and at some point I started, I mean, on my early years, I'm 35 and I started when I was four. So in my early years at school, it was more on a romantic version. I mean, I was a kid, it was a playful time. I, I didn't mind the competitions or the, or the classes. I just enjoyed and it was like playful time. After that, when I started with high school, I, they have like some elections that you do after school activities and I, they have martial arts. So I said, no, I'm gonna start in martial arts because I have the background. So it was like my low hanging fruit. So I started over there. And that was pretty much some of the game changer for me because I started and I started getting involved, 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 and I switched my style. I started, if you see karate as a whole, you have pretty much two major branches that is the traditional karate and the budo karate. Budo pretty much is, it means contact, so when you have the traditional karate, was my early years, and then I switched to budo karate, that it's the more contact style. And when I started back in high school, I always have three goals. That it was one of them to go to a World Cup, second one to to try and compete in Japan. That it's like the origins of karate, and the third one to get my black belt. So and have you done all three? Of yeah, those? actually, on my first one, my first World Cup that I participated was in Russian St. Petersburg. So, so it was my first experience. Second World Cup, it was in Japan and that it was last year, and last year also in the World Cup, I was able to present my third Dan exam for my black belt. And yeah, I'm still, I mean, I thought that it was gonna be my last year as a competitor in, in karate, but I stayed for some time in Japan training with all the, our physical conditioning on CST, duck fit, and, and flow fit. I feel in great shape, and I think that I'm gonna extend my competitor years for, for some for some more time, yeah. So you can be hanging out with Scott until definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's a role model for me because he he was competing till his early I mean late thirties, early forties. Mm -hmm. So I'm mid thirties, so it's definitely a great inspiration for me to to do what I love and and I feel with all my my capability to keep to keep going for some more time. Yeah, I'm very happy to do it. Well, I'd love to hear about how flow state is, has been integrated into your uh, progression as an athlete from a young child to you know your later 20s. Um, did you have an awareness when you were a young child of that flow state that you get into or did that kind of happen later on? I think that it happened later on to be honest because when you are young I think that you have it but you are not really conscious that it's there when you in martial arts, it involves a lot of like mind, body, and spirit, so it integrates a lot with the flow state of mind. But I think that that on your early years, you you see it as a as this like safe spot that you have once, twice, or three times a week when you do your regular training. But you are not really conscious. I mean, you go, you do it, but when you're out, you you're just a little bit more disconnected. You can do it, but subconsciously, that was at least my experience. But when you get to a certain point, when I was getting to my first dan in black belt, I had a, my teacher back in Costa Rica, that is my, my, my master, he pretty much said, when you get to, to black belt, it, it's a circle. You start as a white belt again, so you need to relearn everything thing, and have the, the state of mind as a black belt, uh, sorry, as a white belt to teach and to, and to share your knowledge to the other students. Your, your other peers. 
So for me it came later on that sense of awareness with my flow state of mind, not only on my martial arts but on my fitness as well. So, so it's definitely great to have it there and then you look back and you say, well, it has been there all the time, but, but you are not really aware at yeah. that time, yeah. I find that this style of movement, uh, just training with Scott for the past 10 years, it's, it's been so ingrained into the physical fitness uh, or fin physical movements that it, mm -hmm. it definitely um, just kind of subconsciously gets infiltrated into the athlete's mind. So that's what I'm hoping to illuminate for um, for the viewers is just being able to reach out to other people that have been training flow for a long time and help, help them Definitely. to understand it and apply it to their lives. Definitely. And to add to your comment, Summer, I think that that was my also one thing that kept, kept, me, kept me so so drawn into the system because it was very similar to my martial art words when I saw the first time about CST, tag fit, flow fit, all the system itself. It's, if you see on the industry word that I, at least with my research that I did locally in Costa Rica and abroad, it, it's very similar the, the way we train, the way we move, the way we coach to the martial art world. So okay. definitely goes into that flow state of mind. So Rodrigo, are you a coach to athletes, uh, karate athletes, or are you a coach to the general public? And Both. Is, yeah. Actually, yeah, my fitness center and also on the traveling, we do a lot of, of, on my fitness center, I have coaching with martial arts people, athletes, and also general uh, public, <clears throat> especially people that it's about 50, 60 years old, that they have more challenges uh, on their coaching. And also m most of the part that I teach, especially in the martial arts, it's kids and teenagers. So, so I have all the expect to be honest. Yeah. Do you have a specific coaching philosophy that works well for you for coaching everyone from athletes to seniors? Yeah, I think it's it's funny, it's funny because I think it's very similar when you coach children and grown-ups and actually I think that it, they are sometimes more coachable, the kids and the teenagers than the grown-ups because we somehow, sometimes we have this, this invisible world that we want to, I don't know, that we want to uh, try to copy the movements or make things, our ego and our paradigms, I think that, that it sometimes get in the way into our coaching. But for me, the coaching philosophy, I think that our systems have do a strong part in, in excelling our coaching. And not only they do all our physical and movement and, and physical conditioning activity, but if you, if you have the opportunity to come to one of the certifications and the people that have done it, they see that our coaching is very important and we take it very seriously. So my approach as a coach is to get to know your demographics, get to do some research prior to your class or to your population, to your audience that you're gonna visit and then and then try to to get them with their needs and see what they want because a good coach is not only the tool set that you have on on how you coach, how you do your cues, how you learn your movements, but also you can be a great coach, but if you don't know your demographics and you haven't done any research, mm -hmm. it can be a little bit challenging. So if you do your homework, I'm pretty sure that you will be have, having a great coach. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next question. You're the Latin American director for RMAX. Yes. Um, and you've been doing that for about three years, right? Yes, yeah. this is my third year, correct. And, and also first certified in Costa Rica, right? Yes, I have hosted two certifications in Costa Rica as well. So what is your role as Latin American director and what sort of other opportunities have you had to share this style and this um, flow work with others? Sure, well major, in my majority, my role is pretty much as, as a connection bridge between Scott and and RMAX International with all our regions. So we have a local country representative for country directors which have in each one of the countries that we already have certified people and that we already have some years, some, same, some, some cases like Panama, they have been training for several years. We have like new newcomers like Chile, like Brazil, that they are emerging countries that they have a lot of potential in our region. But majority of my role is to connect with these people, see what are their needs, do all the coordination with their local coaches, with their local representative in order to host seminars, to host certifications, workshops. 
So it's a lot of PR work, and, and especially with the sometimes with the language barrier or the or the distance that you need to put yourself very creative. But it has been a, a very good journey, and, and we have been emerging the Latin America region uh, very very well. We are we we have now presence in several countries in South America, Central America. So. Yeah, so so very happy to be with the ball. It's it's not easy. We have a lot of. I mean, it's a huge area, and we have a lot of of cultural differences and a lot of challenges. But I think that's a positive way for us to focus our system and start excelling. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited to see the growth in that region, and it seems like when we have good people that are able to connect well with others and able to network and. Um, create that flow even in business, Definitely. not necessarily just on Definitely. the mat, but yeah. um, that good things happen and we continue to grow and attract really high level, high caliber athletes and coaches. Definitely. So, good job. Um, my next question, you own a fitness center in San Jose. Yes. And I was wondering, what is the uh, fitness community like in Costa Rica overall? Okay. I think that if you see Central America as a whole, Costa Rica is very competitive on the fitness community. We have uh, one of the major things that we have in Costa Rica is that our education is very well shaped because several years ago, since 1948, we abolished the army and there was a, that president at that time, and I don't want to bore you guys with some <laughs> history, but they allocated all the resources of military to education. So our community, our middle class, and our community in Costa Rica, it's the people know that they need to study, they need to get some education, uh, college certifications, academy education in order to, in any of the, of the areas, in order to, to grow. So our fitness community is very well educated. I think that we have a lot of uh, competition, but I think competition is good. So we have uh, several areas, different areas in, in nutrition, in fitness, in, in all kinds of, of areas. And, and Costa Rica is very well rounded. So when you present a new system or a new a new proposal in the fitness industry, they are very well educated. So they their sense of criticism and evaluation of the system, I think it's going to be tough because they they know they have been training most of them for several years. So so it's it's a good community, and the community it's it's robust in in the sense of of education and awareness of the fitness industry in general. Great. Well, I know that yeah. yoga is huge in Costa Rica, yeah, and is. I've just seen it pretty much explode in the past 20 years. Yeah, in so. the last 20, 10 yeah. years it has come big, yeah, really, what, really big. Well, since I, I'm the founder of Cobal Yoga, and I really am excited to eventually get that over and over yeah, to the Costa Rican community, yeah. but can you kind of give us some background on what the yoga and flow community is like in the region? Yeah, basically, uh, in Costa Rica, it, it started uh, pretty much several years ago, but my experience with the yoga community is that when it started, it pretty much started like in local places, local people, but we didn't have any like big uh, studios or big uh, places that they teach yoga. Uh, or they were part of the offering for regular conventional gymnasiums. Like you go and they have one, one lesson of like yoga, Pilates, or functional, or Zumba, or I don't know, several. Just like a group fitness exactly, class. Exactly, like a group fitness class, correct. So what we have seen on the past five, ten years is that it has exploded in the way that now you can find places that are just specialized in yoga and not only yoga, they specialize in different branches of yoga. So when you have huge places with people doing very well things, and from all the fitness community, my experience in Costa Rica, the most connected and the most collaborative and synchronized in order to work is the yoga community. So when you see the yoga festival that it's done once a year back in San Jose, Costa Rica, you see these guys connecting and you see the classes and the, it's like, a, I don't know, like three, four days of like teaching and master classes and, and they have like this big offering of, of services all focused on yoga and flow, so it's, it's huge. Yeah, and the other part that I have seen as well is not only in San Jose, that is our capital city, so we have several uh, places back on the coast that they are really top-notch, high-end, that they reach out not only to our local community, but their major uh, 
source of students comes from abroad, like America, Europe, uh, even Australia, some other places that they have a yoga teacher training program. So like Mosana and a lot of places that they reach out also to go into this experience that it involves not only yoga and movement of itself, but wellness and close their mind as a whole that they that they teach a little bit of like nutrition, well-being, and they are based on, on the specific spots that they that they have all the nature and all the, the like beach and chill out place in order for you to go disconnect and take a huge advantage of this. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to learn about flow in a place where you can yeah. easily access flow state, which is nature. Do you get an opportunity to go out into nature and go to the coast, or are you mostly yeah, in the city? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I'm mostly in the city, but at least I try to go at least once a month, and not only for business sometimes. We have several taxi coaches in Costa Rica as well that they are based on the coast, but not only for business, sometimes for pleasure and with my family, so definitely love it to to go and Costa Rica is very small country, so everything is very close. So, so yeah, I love to disconnect and to go down into nature, not only the coast, rainforest, everything. Yeah. Um, last question for Rodrigo: sure. uh, What what are your future plans for continuing to grow uh, this system in in Costa Rica in the next sure. few years? Well, I think that we have a huge community in Costa Rica from all the countries in Latin America. Being my hometown, I think that Costa Rica is the one that we have now more certified coaches and that they have grown the most. Uh, we did a, we host a certification back in 2014, back in 2015. So my plans for the region, I think that I want to pass the torch to some of the other countries in Latin America to have the same opportunity to to grow as a, as a country and grow our community. And my plans in Costa Rica is our local people to keep training, to keep excelling on our students and, and really see that difference on our coaching and our, on our fitness industry that in sometimes we are lacking and we're just, and just missing some, the whole point that is the well-being of the people and the, to being capable to help them out, to reconnect and to and to connect back to their bodies and their minds. So that's that's my major goal right now, as I said, is to reconnect our region, to keep growing our local community, uh, and connect all those people. Very nice. Well, I'm definitely excited for you. And definitely. It's Looking forward to see you down yeah, in Costa Rica we'll as well. We'll see you probably later this year. I hope definitely. Well, yeah. thank you so much for doing this thank interview. You. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you very much. Stay Thank tuned for future episodes on summerhuntington.com. This is Flow State of Mind.